G'day. This is the 10th video in the series uh, tracing my uh, progress on a three and a half inch gauge Virginia. Uh, here I've uh, captured the progress I made on uh, machining the eccentric straps and fabricating the rods to go with uh, and then assembling those uh, with the assistance of a jig uh, to uh, get a result that I'm, I'm quite pleased with. Uh, this part of the construction presented a few challenges and uh, if I was to do it again I'd probably change a few things um, but uh, as many who enjoy this hobby would know uh, there's always uh, more than one way to, to skin a cat and uh, I made a couple of errors along the way uh, but was able to recover those uh, and um, in the end uh, got a accurate result uh, and a cosmetically pleasing result uh, certainly to my eyes and I think these will, uh, will certainly do the job uh, and I think if anything they're probably a little bit over engineered uh, for the scale of locomotive that uh, they're fitted to um, but that's fine uh, it was an enjoyable exercise uh, so the first part I tackled was really just um, cutting out uh, roughly to size the uh, the rods from some 1 8 one eighth by a a uh, half inch uh, flat bar uh, and then marking those out uh, and then machining out the profile uh, on the milling machine uh, of those in accordance with LBSC's instructions. Uh, relatively uh, straightforward um, machining operation. Uh, uh, the uh, images here um, don't look particularly accurate because these are only uh, cut to approximate size and roughed out uh, this is just to get the profile, the rest of it um, is tidied up as I move along. Um, I did a little bit of research online to, to determine how to best tackle uh, the four bronze castings for the eccentric straps uh, and wanted to try and do them uh, in a manner that was uh, as efficient and um, I guess uh, as accurate as far as repeatability uh, and to get commonality for those four castings, get them all uh, dimensionally um, extremely similar and I think I achieved that effectively by uh, machining a datum and then um, keeping them together as a set and rotating them around in the mill uh, to get them um, machined up uh, to the external dimensions which uh, don't call for a high degree of accuracy but certainly um, need to be um, consistent for all four uh, just so that they, uh, they look representative of the sort of prototypical eccentric strap. Uh, this was relatively uh, straightforward and my little uh, Maximat uh, lathe milling attachment didn't have too much trouble with that. Um, then turned back to the, uh, the rods and uh, to uh, establish uh, the amount of material I need or set the amount of material I needed for the forked ends. I just used some uh, quarter inch uh, square uh, bar and then uh, using some uh, silver solder uh, brace that onto the ends uh, in, a, in a relatively straightforward operation uh, to then uh, return to the mill to uh, machine the um, <clears throat> the fork uh, where then they uh, could then uh, slot into the rest of the valve gear. Uh, what I struggled with was determining how to set this up to get a, uh, a square uh, base of the fork um, and in the end uh, determined the easiest way to do it with the equipment that I had uh, was to uh, cut those slots as you see uh, in the image and then uh, file square the base of the fork uh, to make it uh, fit and uh, while that was a little bit tedious uh, I got quite accurate results uh, and was careful with the filing um, and I'm quite pleased with the result in the end uh, so certainly achieved the aim and, and really um, accuracy uh, was the priority here <clears throat> as far as the fit um, for the moving parts um, and correct clearances etc I certainly had no difficulty with that uh, what I did do was one of the uh, holes that I drilled for the uh, the pins 
uh, I made an error with marking out there and drilled that in the wrong spot. So I um, uh, silver brazed in a, uh, a bolt of the uh, correct diameter, uh, so, sort of screwed in and then took soldered it in and then machined off the ends uh, and remarked and re-drilled the hole uh, to recover that, uh, that strap. Uh, and that uh, seems to have worked uh, quite well. Uh, I then then returned the straps to the three jaw using some uh, high speed steel, um, tool steel uh, as packy pieces to get them square in the chuck, uh, just to uh, machine them to the right uh, thickness. Uh, I had to be a little bit careful in making sure I had them square. Uh, and of course, remembering to remove the tool steel prior to starting the, uh, the lathe. Um, and then uh, machined all those to, to the uh, required thickness. Um, on, uh, from there, uh, the oil holes for the little uh, the oil cups and, and uh, holes just for, for uh, oil in the straps. A uh, couple of slots in those with the hacksaw after marking out, uh, smooth the surfaces, uh, bolted together, and then returned to the uh, four jaw for um, accurately boring out the uh, to the correct diameter uh, for uh, the eccentrics themselves and made a, uh, a plug gauge for that uh, in accordance with LBC's instructions and you can see that fitted here uh, and that that worked very well uh, and that um, plug gauge came in uh, handy for the uh, next exercise which was making up the jig uh, I chose to hacksaw that off uh, and then return it to the uh, the, the, um, the lathe to uh, square up. Uh, I still haven't really mastered um, parting off material of this diameter on my little uh, Maximat and uh, that's something I need to work on so I, I chickened out and used the hacksaw there. Uh, but got a good result. Uh, then uh, marked out uh, using a bit of uh, half inch flat bar, uh, the jig uh, as described by LBSC. When I came to make the jig for the uh, expansion rods uh, and links, uh, LBSC describes uh, in his words and music from the model engineer, the, uh, the criticality uh, of accuracy here and he says that uh, when attaching the rods to the straps uh, there is one vital point that must not be overlooked or the locomotive will never perform in the manner expected. All four must be exactly the same and the length between the centres of the straps and eyes and exactly is the right word for it. So I uh, carefully measured and marked and, and drilled the holes uh, for that jig uh, and uh, was, was quite uh, happy with it. Uh, as far as what it needed to achieve, uh, tested it out. Uh, and before I, I went on to uh, setting up to uh, do the silver soldering and, and riveting assembling of those, uh, I made a, a, a very quick uh, set of uh, filing buttons uh, to uh, file the uh, correct radiuses on the ends of the uh, eccentric uh, rods so that they looked uh, prototypical. Uh, not strictly necessary, um, uh, could have left them just with slightly rounded radiuses or, or even square um, and there wouldn't have been any risk of interference there but it, it wouldn't have looked right and uh, there's uh, a relatively high boiler on uh, Virginia so that would have been visible uh, and I wouldn't have been uh, happy with that. So made the, uh, the filing buttons uh, and heated those to cherry red and then quenched those to harden them uh, which worked quite well. Uh, and, uh, and you can see the results here uh, and quickly uh, did that little job uh, in probably 10 minutes for all four uh, straps, or oh, sorry, the, uh, the, the rods. Uh, then went on to uh, set up the straps in the mill to uh, machine uh, a 1 8 inch uh, deep rebate uh, for uh, the straps to slot into. Uh, and had to take particular care there to ensure that the uh, concentricity of the, um, the straps was not compromised. They're bronze castings, they're quite light. Uh, and as you can see here, it wouldn't take much uh, 
uh, I guess, over a uh, eagerness on the vice to uh, quickly uh, have them out of round and, and ruined. Uh, so I very gently uh, placed them in the vice. Uh, I used the um, the uh, center or the the piece of the jig that I'd uh, parted off earlier uh, from the plug gauge, uh, just to help protect those uh, so that they weren't damaged. Uh, and and in the end, uh, followed the uh, the four rebate rebates in a, a repeatable uh, manner for those, uh, and then uh, placed them um, onto the the jig to the, do the final assembly. Uh, and as I did that, um, placed them on the jig, uh, measured to length, and then just in the vise quickly used a large file to remove the uh, excess material to then set up uh, for the. Uh, silver brazing operation uh, and they using the jig they all came out uh, quite accurately uh, with a bit of cleaning up quite neatly uh, and then moved on to mark out uh, the three holes for the 1 16th rivets um, which I would I would believe this is probably a little bit uh, over engineered uh, I don't think the stresses on these will be uh, significant uh, not, you know, making sure that the uh, all the valve gear is erected correctly. Um, but it's a bit of a belt and braces approach. Uh, followed LBSC's direction. Uh, I certainly wouldn't be one to question his advice. Um, everything he's described so far, I think, has been proven, uh, you know, regularly through the hobby that it was pretty sound advice. Uh, so measured and marked out, uh, and then in turn used the uh, the jig to drill some um, some pilot holes in that for the others. Uh, put the rivets in, um, look quite neat, uh, file flush on the uh, opposing side, uh, and then uh, took advantage of some warm weather to, to mask up and quickly do some painting. Uh, and you'll see there's some other components just in the images here from pre previous work that I've done on uh, Virginia, I painted those up as well, uh, and then got those fitted, uh, took the tape off the, uh, the, the straps uh, and assembled rods and uh, I'm quite pleased with the result. It took a while to get there. This was uh, took quite a while to fabricate these, uh, but they uh, are all accurate uh, in accordance with uh, LBSC's description. Some of those, a little bit of excess solder you can see there in a couple of places, uh, but I'm quite pleased with the result and I'm looking forward to getting the rest of the valve gear uh, fabricated and, and, and fitted up. I'm quite uh, pleased with the progress, noting this is my first live steam locomotive build. Uh, and I'm feeling my way along, uh, but really enjoy, uh, like so many before me, reading LBSC's uh, descriptions uh, and then surfing the net to uh, find a little bit of other uh, guidance as I go, and, uh, and this is progress to date. Uh, so the, uh, the next thing I'll, uh, I'll turn my attention to with, uh, with Virginia uh, will probably be uh, the eccentrics themselves, uh, although I've got a few other things on the go. I need to really get back to the boiler uh, and finished that, uh, but I've kind of stalled um, where I've had some difficulty with the reverse flange on the throat plate and getting that as accurate uh, as I would like. Uh, but uh, I just need to get back to that and persevere and then uh, get get on with the boiler because that is a huge um, body of work and really uh, a bit of a hump in the project, I think, for a lot of uh, live steam locomotives. So I could get that uh, progressing and eventually behind me, then I really uh, feel good about that. But uh, it's all a matter of finding enough time uh, to get into the workshop and, and then do that. Well, I hope this was of uh, interest and, and use to some, and, uh, and thanks for watching.